In this video, we're going to do another example of solving a recurrence relation and coming up with an explicit formula. Now, before I go over this problem, why don't you pause the video and try it out yourself? Remember the trick from the previous video. Don't worry about actually solving for each of these. Try to take what the pattern is, the pre-solution, and use that to plug into the next step and see if you can find the pattern. Okay, I'm hoping that you've paused the video and you've given it a try, and now we're gonna go over it. So here we have a sub one. Notice our recurrence relation is that we have each value is two times the previous value. So a sub one is gonna be two times a sub zero, which is gonna be two times a sub zero is three. All right, and I could work that out and say that's six, but I don't even need to do that. Next, I'm gonna to go to a two, and I'm gonna say a two is two times a sub one, because it's two times my previous value. And so I'm just gonna tech, I'm gonna say two, and I could put parentheses and say two times three but that's really not needed either. I'm just gonna say two times two times three. And then a sub three is two times a sub two, which is two times two times two times three. And I bet you're seeing the pattern now. And here we've got a sub two or a sub four, excuse me, is two times a sub three, and that's gonna be two times this mess, which is two times two times two times two times three. And at this point is when we wanna take a look, after we've done a couple of iterations of this, and notice that when the subscript is four, we have four twos. And that's gonna be what allows us to come up with our pattern. So what we have is if we had an a sub n, we would have n twos. Times a three at the end. And there would be n of these twos. And the way we could write that in an explicit formula, we could say that a sub n is equal to three times two to the power of n, right? Because two to the power of n is just two multiplied by itself n times. And remember, an explicit formula always has a starting point for a sequence. So we have to say for all n greater than or equal to, in this case, we started at zero. So here we're gonna start at zero. This type of sequence is what's known as a geometric sequence, and it's some constant times the previous value. And the explicit formula for an error, this is a typo, this should be a geometric sequence. Sequence is going to be whatever the initial value is, a sub one, times that constant to the power of n. And remember, we can't forget this bottom part that specifies where the sequence starts. That's not always gonna be greater than or equal to one. It could start at zero like we had in our problem. 